This video and the Fall TV Takeover are brought to you by PayPal, the simple and safe way to spend, send, and receive money. Download the app today. To catch a murderer, you need to understand the way they think. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top five things you need to know about Mindhunter. I understand your frustration. What do you understand? Not being able to communicate with a trusted loved one. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're taking a behind-the-scenes look at this Netflix crime drama. Coffee? Coffee's okay, I guess. Number five, it's inspired by a true crime book. Special Agent Holden Ford. Television isn't exactly short on crime dramas or police procedurals, but few can boast source material written by one of the founding fathers of criminal profiling. Mindhunter, inside the FBI's elite serial crime unit, recounts the harrowing crimes faced by FBI agent turned author John E. Douglas during his time with the Bureau, and takes a deep dive into how psychology played a role in solving each crime. Sound familiar? It should. He served as the inspiration for Jack Crawford in the Hannibal Lecter series. Jack Crawford dangles you in front of me, then I give you a bit of help. Though the main character is named Holden Ford in the Netflix series, much like Jack Crawford, Ford is modeled after John E. Douglas. I still don't believe it should be a mitigating factor. They still have the ability to make choices. Number four, the leading man comes with an impressive resume. And the reality is you have to talk to them. Somebody demands the impossible, you can't just shoot him. Speaking of Holden Ford, Netflix managed to nab a rather talented young man to bring this version of John E. Douglas to life. Jonathan Groff might not be a household name like some of the behind-the-scenes players we'll be discussing later on, but he's certainly an accomplished actor. His role as King George III in Hamilton earned him a Tony Award nomination. From 2014 to 2016, he starred in the HBO series Looking. He's not listening. Do you have any bourbon? Though he got his start in theater, he came to the attention of a much larger audience after stealing scenes in the role of Jesse St. James on Glee. Oh, and did we mention that he voiced Kristoff in Disney's Frozen? Talented indeed. <laughs> I'm, it, uh, it's fine. Uh, I'm good. Uh, I've got a thick skull. Number three, the series delivers a disturbing and realistic tone. We're from the Behavioral Science Unit. We're doing research, interviewing men like you. How does a show distinguish itself in an oversaturated genre? By covering that well-tread thematic ground in a fresh new way. Mindhunter is not particularly interested by the dirty details of the crimes themselves, but rather the minds behind them. <laughs> You're crazy. The series doesn't obsess or fetishize the violence like so many of its contemporaries. As James Ponowazek of the New York Times put it so succinctly, Mindhunter is, quote, more chatter than splatter. The sobering series works to dismantle the cult of the serial killer by breaking them down to their psychological profiles. Don't get us wrong, there are plenty of horrifying moments. They just tend to come via conversation rather than a shot of a dismembered corpse. I knew a week before she died I was gonna kill her. Number two, it boasts some big name producers. So you're saying you don't think this us interviewing these killers is crazy? The even pacing, realism, and attention to detail of this series shouldn't really surprise you considering the man behind it. David Fincher, who has delved deep into the subject matter of serial killers in such excellent films as Seven and Zodiac, serves as executive producer of Mindhunter, and actually directed four out of the ten episodes in the first season. Of course, he's not the only celeb involved. A-list actress Charlize Theron joins him as a fellow executive producer. Of course, both of these big names have worked with Netflix as producers before, Fincher on House of Cards and Theron with Girl Boss. And clearly, they enjoy the way Netflix works. What's the problem? I guess I'm just pissed off. About what? I don't know yet! Number one, the show deals with real criminals from history. If you do, but I'll see it. Then why kill her? Because I wanted to. Douglas's book is not a work of fiction. In it, he provides a first-hand account of his experiences dealing with some of the most notorious serial killers and criminals in United States history. You think this might help? Help with what? Find a cure. Serial killers might be a dime a dozen on television these days, but in Mindhunter, you're getting dramatic interpretations of real-life murderers from the pages of America's colorful criminal past. 
Edmund Kemper, also known as the co-ed killer, Monty Ralph Rissell, Jerry Brudos, also known as the Shoe Fetish Slayer, Richard Speck, and Daryl Jean Devier are just a handful of the sinister individuals you'll see brought to life in this dramatic series. Be warned, though, you'll be taking a close look into some seriously twisted minds. There's nothing wrong. If what we're doing doesn't get under your skin, you're either more screwed up than I thought or you're kidding yourself. This video and the Fall TV Takeover are brought to you by PayPal, the simple and safe way to spend, send, and receive money. Download the app today.